Hi, everybody. I'm new to this Zoom thing as well. So thanks for your patience. Um, my name is Lori Block. I'm a physio. I've been a physio for 14 years and um, I've mainly worked in sports focused uh, physio practices and I've worked in a couple different ski towns. Uh, I work with a lot of post-surgical patients and a lot of mountain athletes. Um, I've worked uh, as a team physio for the um, freestyle, the Canadian freestyle ski team, and I've worked with Canada Snowboard um, and traveled on the World Cup circuit with them, but left um, the World Cup circuit to uh, pursue ski guiding. And when I'm uh, an apprentice, ACMG, ski guide um, and I work um, around the province a couple different operations and I also am a physio in the winter as well so kind of doing both both of those things so yeah we're going to switch it up a little bit from navigation I thought I'd talk a little bit today about some common ski injuries and um, talk about some prevention and then some exercise and rehab options that we have right now while we're all staying home. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty unique time. Like uh, all the backcountry lodges have been closed now for a few weeks. Uh, huts are closed, parks closed. Uh, basically not too many people are skiing. And it's April 3rd. It's the best time of year to ski. It's like perfect adventure alpine time. Um, but yeah, we're not. So, uh, you know, if you live in the sea of sky, we can still get out on the trails and uh, run, you know, get out on our mountain bikes. Uh, but it's a pretty unique time. And a lot of us have extra time, which is also pretty special. And then as a physio, to me, it's a perfect time to rehab. So it's a perfect time to get strong. Um, and yeah, if you're not injured, perfect time to just to strengthen. And if you have an injury, perfect time to, to rehab. And the best part of it all is that there's no FOMO because nobody's doing much. So um, yeah, let's just jump into this uh, keynote presentation on some common injuries. So I get asked a lot, what are, what are the most common ski injuries um, that, I, that I come across? And the next question usually is, how do I prevent that from happening to me? So um, yeah, first injury that I see most often is our knee injuries. So ACL, MCL, we've all heard about uh, those sort of injuries. Meniscus too is really common. Uh, these, these injuries happen from like twisting rotational forces or hyperextension injuries. So basically crashing while you're skiing. Um, and sometimes you have a good sense of that. So if you crash and you try to stand up and, and you can't, you can't, you feel like your knee isn't stable. That's a good indicator that you need to get it checked out and assessed for, for that sort of damage. Uh, full grade ACL tear usually uh, requires surgery and um, it's a long rehab process. So nine month rehab process is generally uh, what the surgeons in the CS guy um, recommend. Uh, anyone going through that rehab process before they get back out on snow, they do a return to sport test. So uh, to get back out, you want to be 90% from your operated side to your healthy side. Uh, next injury, shoulder. So uh, sometimes we see more shoulder injuries in, in snowboarders. Um, and it's, it happens commonly just from uh, falling, reaching behind or reaching out to the side. And uh, a couple different structures can get injured, rotator cuff, you can tear your rotator cuff uh, or you can sublux or dislocate your shoulder as well. Um, the rehab time for this is highly variable depending on what structures have been damaged 
and whether surgery is required or not. So uh, pretty variable, but you know, bad rotator cuff injuries I see take three plus months. Uh, if you end up requiring surgery for um, a shoulder that's repeatedly dislocating, it um, it can be a six month six month uh, rehab. Next, uh, most more common injury I see is an ankle or a boot top fracture. So that involves the tibia and the fibula. And um, it's related to, again, crashing and just the torque right where your boot top sits can, can cause those, ca cause fractures in those two bones. Uh, when both are fractured often, it does mean surgery, it, surgery is required. It usually involves hardware, so plates and pins. And I'm finding a lot that most mountain athletes to get back to the level of uh, function they want to return to, they need to have that hardware removed uh, down the line. And usually that's one year post-op. So yeah, rehab from that surgery is usually about six months. And um, if uh, hardware needs to be removed, it happens down the line, typically around here. So rehab for all of these um, common injuries is really different um, and, and timelines are different and it's based on what the injury is, um, whether you had surgery, your age, your general health, all these things play into timelines. Um, and the thing with rehab is that exercises are quite specific to what stage of healing you're in. And, um, and they're progressive. So you want con to continually be improving and making these exercises harder until the point that you're back to sport or whatever you're trying to get back to. Prevention. So people always ask me how to prevent these sort of things. Biggest thing is to be strong. So strength training. So for skiing, you know, you really want to focus on your legs, glutes, core. So that's, you know, exercises like squats and lunges. Um, balance training is really important. So wobble boards, bosu balls, anything that sort of challenges that, that dynamic system. And then um, eccentric training is important, especially early season. Um, so that's jumping, hopping, uh, just loading your legs um, to, to build up the strength in those muscles. And then mobility, so like yoga, rollers, um, balls are, are important uh, for maintenance and, and um, staying functional. A bit more specifically, preseason, um, trying to get into the habit every year, you know, usually about six to eight weeks before the ski season starts, is to get into a, a dynamic eccentric strengthening program. And this is something you can do at home. You don't have to go to a gym. You can, you can use your own space. Uh, there's lots of resources available, and, and I'll get into that in a couple of minutes. Um, but starting that, you know, a couple months out from the start of ski season is best. You need time for your body to adapt and, and to get strong. And the stronger you go into your season, um, the, the, the better off you are to prevent these sort of things from happening. Uh, and then the other thing to consider is, is having an assessment done for like individual corrective exercises that you incorporate into your, uh, into your life. So, you know, when we're in the middle of ski season, we're not going to the gym. We're all kind of tired from skiing most days, but getting a program which uh, addresses some muscle imbalances. So, um, you know, like working on some glute strength and then also some specific stretching and rolling. Uh, it, that's important to do throughout your season. And that allows you to get through your season, essentially. Uh, hot tips for a long ski career. So yeah, the big things I see uh, as a ski guide and a physio um, is is equipment. You, uh, if you're serious about about this stuff, then then consider equipment upgrades and consider light equipment. Um, uh, yeah, the the technology changes all the time. So there's there's um, there's really light skis and bindings available now that are still really bomber. So consider considering lightening your setup and making sure it's uh, working well. So checking your bindings, check your dins, make sure that's set up properly. 
Um, and when you're out in the field, like when you're out skiing, uh, check to your toes for icing issues uh, to make sure that you're not gonna pop out of your bindings when you're skiing down. Um, don't lock your toes. The number of ACL tears, the number of tip -tip fractures I've seen related to locked pin bindings, there, there's a lot. So unless tearing your ACL is the lesser concern in the situation, I recommend not lock locking your toes. Um, and then learning efficiency. So pacing, stride length, all those things, they come with time, but just uh, you know, not, not uh, moving at a place that you can sustain for eight hours and then stride so you're not, your hip flexors aren't, aren't getting strained. Uh, like packs. So that's not something you might think about day to day, but over the years, I see it. And lightening the pack uh, is really important for, for skiing until you're, you know, 60, 70, which is the goal for, for all of us. And um, so just little changes in, in what you're carrying. Um, you know, we need all these, these emergency things we need for safety kits, we need, um, you know, like in reaches, like those things can't be changed, but we can get lightweight, lightweight rope kits and we can just lighten the load uh, wherever we can, uh, which is better for longevity. Um, and then proper recovery, you know, usually we, we finish a big day at the handlebar or wherever we're going for apre, and <laughs> that's not actually really the best thing uh, you know, we had to consider the fact that we are mountain athletes, so maybe, I mean, yes, handlebar is the best thing, but uh, we need to hydrate and think about our nutrition and maybe like roll and stretch and do some of our correctives so we can get out there the next day. So, um, yeah, just remember, we're athletes too. And then, so, I think there was another slide. Let's just see. Oh, I was on it. Yeah, so stay home. We're staying home right now, but we can stay fit. This is a pretty unique time um, that we can focus on different kinds of strengthening and exercise uh, options that are available to us. So I've been taking the last couple of weeks kind of looking through to see what's available out there. And um, I found some really great things. So um, yeah, free online home exercise programs. I've been doing uh, movement 108s, Instagram live workouts, 7 a.m., 4 p.m. And then there's the Nike training app, which is free. They have a bunch of different workouts you can choose from, targeting different areas. Um, and then Movement Fix also has a bunch of good posts. Uh, yoga with Tim, that's my guilty pleasure, but it's kind of it's kind of great. And then um, there's local gyms so you know consider keeping it local uh and for a small fee you can support our local businesses and they have a lot of online resources available right now while we're all at home so i have a link to that i'm just gonna pull up my website so i have a link to that on my website uh under resources um, so a couple of things here that might be useful for people. Uh, I have links to Sea to Sky Orthopedics and BAMP Sport Medicine. So anybody who's uh, pre or post surgical, um, anybody who is waiting for surgery, well, non-essential uh, surgeries were all canceled. So you're going to be waiting for a while, unfortunately. So it's, it's kind of a tough position to be in. Um, but one thing to think about is that the stronger you go into surgery, the stronger you come out. So use this time, treat it like um, physio is the answer and strengthening is the answer and, and do what you can to, to get as strong as possible. And so if you follow these links, they have resources available um, for most of the surgeries that they, that they do. So good resources there. Uh, scrolling down, so pre-season backcountry ski training. Uh, TGR has a series of, um, of training videos and backcountry.com does, does the leg blaster series, which is painful but awesome. So this is something that you can think about uh, getting into uh, at the start of ski season. And this is the TGR site. It has a bunch of different things and you can do a lot of this stuff at home as well. And then, um, 
sorry, let's just go down to this one, which shows the leg blasters. And then it also shows a progression of how you'd kind of work through that as you get stronger. And then um, last is those um, stay home resources I was talking about. So uh, we have the gyms locally, there's the wildlife in Squamish, Whistler Core and Whistler Tight Club. There's lots in the city and in the sea of sky. So just whoever you're already associated with, take a look at that. Um, and then all those other ones that we mentioned, I mentioned before, um, that's also available as well. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing this. And then the other thing to consider is, um, is that there is virtual physio, virtual rehab services available. Most clinics are offering it. And, um, so check with your physio if they're available to do that. If not, there's, um, quite a few clinics that, that can provide it, including myself. So there's resources available. Um, I have been doing it the last couple of weeks. I'd say the most uh, useful is that it um, is great for people that are post-surgical that had surgery just before this COVID-19 um, uh, kept us all at home. So it's, it's good to get those exercise progressions and check in, just make sure you're on track. Um, any new injuries that come up from like, you know, doing yoga in your living room when you don't normally do that, then uh, that's, that's a good resource as well. And then if you're interested in like functional assessment or corrective exercise, uh, it all works virtually. Um, yeah, I guess like just take home message. It's a pretty unique time. We have time. Uh, so it's a really good opportunity to work on strength and fitness and mobility in ways that we wouldn't normally consider doing. So um, yeah, just um, that's, that's kind of it. I see there's a bunch of chat and questions. It's just the one Q&A on there. Let me go to the Q&A here. There's that one question. Um, if it's not ski season, it's mountain biking season. So how would you throw in your strength training then? I guess it's all about where your priority lies and just balancing everything. Yeah, I agree. It's it's like general strength training is is improves every sport. So whether it's mountain biking, um, rock climbing, uh, just just doing sort of like general fitness is is going to help with every sport. It translates across everything. Um, so yes, balance your priorities. Um, do you? Paul had Greenwood had a question about locking toe pieces, but okay. we covered that. Uh, do you often travel for work as a physiotherapist? I, I did, yes. I traveled around the world uh, for five years with different uh, ski teams and snowboard teams, but I no longer do that. Um, and then with stage four or five AC joint separation after proper rehab and strength will it settle back down in time. Um, as at the moment, hard to shoulder skis. Yeah, so that, you know, it, it, there needs to be a bit more information there. Uh, but yes, generally most AC joint separations become less painful in time. Um, but initially they are quite a painful injury. So uh, it does take, take weeks uh, or months for that to settle. Um, but in, you know, that step deformity might not change with the AC joint separation. It might be always a little bit awkward with skis on one side, but the pain, it should, should subside. But lots of strengthening is important for that. Um, AC joints are, um, do require a fair bit of rotator cuff and scap, scap strengthening. A um, couple more questions here. Good exercise for mangled meniscus. Um, so, yeah, that's... For, for meniscus in your knee, the, you want to really focus on strengthening your legs, glutes, core muscles. So, um, you know, like squats, lunges, um, lots of balance work is important. Core, core stability uh, is, is key for that as well. So it's never just a knee. It's, it's linked to your, your hip and your core. So um, lower body, consider it all lower body. 
<laughs> okay, that's about it, I think. So I'll hand it back to Ross somehow.